I'm narrating on the fly here, there's no script, and this is for anyone else who's interested in the Epsom DX4 printhead. I'm just a novice, and there's the head under a microscope. I was real curious why it failed, and here what looks like bullet shots, those silver marks, those spots. It appears to me that there's some kind of a non-stick surface on the outside of the printhead, and once it starts to decay, that's where the ink will build up and dry and it'll chip away bit by bit by bit as the ink is passing through. Here's a close-up view. Those holes are so fine it's very hard to see with the naked eye but with the microscope it's quite helpful. I scratched that area with an exacto. I was just curious on how thick the what I call an anti-stick surface is. Sort of like a frying pan. It's not very thick. Here is the inside of the printhead of the plate at the end. That's, that's what you would see if you took one apart. That is the metal plate itself. That's your, your jet. That's from the outside. And just by looking at it, you could tell that it's had its time. The wrinkles you see on the left side of that little metal plate between my finger and thumb, uh, I bent that back and forth repeatedly over and over and over again. I was trying to get it to snap, but it wouldn't. I was curious, you know, how tough is it? And I'm just going to guess, perhaps it's a, it's a tough material like a tungsten. It's quite thin, but it's very, very strong. and just bend that back and forth and back and forth and it doesn't break. This is the top side of the DX4. You can see some of the circuitry there. And the bottom side of course or the nozzle plate was torn off. It looks to me like maybe a quartz crystal or some, something. The, there's jagged glass-like portions to it. I don't know what they're made of. I'm just guessing. There you can see the white areas. That's like that quartz that I was guessing it was quartz. If someone knows, let me know. There again, the circuitry up close. There's a different print head uh, that I didn't crush. That's what you would see with the plate removed. And this is quite interesting. Imagine the machinery that was engineered to fabricate these parts. That must all be cut with a with a laser. It is just so absolutely fine. It's amazing. I was fascinated to see all this. Fine, fine detail. And perfect. That's what I pulled out from the top of that print head. Reminds me of the teeth in the uh, blue whale. And up close I'm just going to guess perhaps quartz crystal and circuitry that goes to every single one of them. Absolutely fascinating. The engineering that went into creating these print heads is just fascinating and also delicate. As you can see there are shards they won't work again. Before I did that, I flushed out that print head, both channels uh, through the manifold, and it was tough getting the cleaning fluid to spray through to give me a curtain, and I knew there was trouble. Here I am just changing sides on the manifold, test the other side, and I did 
eventually get it to spray through. Uh, there was a lot of deflection. The head was simply gone. It had over 4.5 billion shots. And gonna put away that dirty cleaning fluid. This is interesting as well. Uh, I'm using acetone and I'm forcing all the ink and the acetone back through the line. I use some empty old tanks uh, in place of the uh, the ink tanks themselves and I'm just using those to catch the fluid as I force it back to clean everything up wiping down the uh, top side of the hoses so that they're clear again so that I can see nice clean ink in there and of course at the tips of it where it's going to reconnect to the uh, to the dampers ink lines look pretty clean they're stained but they look good and here where they plug into the ink tanks at this point here I've got the uh, dampers reconnected the new dampers I'm pulling ink with a syringe into the damper just to fill them up I cleaned everything inside this area in the uh, head carriage dated the, uh, the filters because I've got two machines here and here's a couple of print heads from the past you can tell just by looking at them they've had their time reassembling after cleaning that's the adapter plate you'll want to put that little spring on there and then feed it through the hole in the, like you're seeing right there yeah. and then refasten the two screws there's a rubber gasket on the back side of that if you took it apart you'll find and uh, you want to snug these screws up there there is a, a procedure for it uh, and a tool for it I just did it by hand snugged it up fairly good not over tightening it but snugged it up good And then reinstallation. Be very careful when you're installing that spring. That's the first thing you'll do before you put the screws in. Because if you let that go, it'll end up somewhere in the room. <laughs> it'll be a chore to find it. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> also, for the screws, there's a procedure that front screw is screw number three that's screw number two and screw number one if you look in the service manual you'll see the the, the sequence so keeping the front up you slide the back in and then drop the front down metal plate that it's attaching to I cleaned all that up with acetone in the slots and the openings it was quite gummed up um, in fact I had a hard time getting the print head out so I had to go back underneath and clean up um, with solvent with cleaning fluid to soften up some of the gummed up hardened ink and same went for the top I pretty well doused it with the uh, with a little sponge to soften it all up and then wiggled it up and out I didn't trust my magnetic screwdriver it wasn't very strong so I had to use those that little tool to uh, put the back screw in it's a very tight area to work in on the SP300V the carriage head is very very close very very close to everything and um, yeah give it a little wiggle installing the dampers when removing them pull them straight up 
don't bend them, pull them straight up, and when installing them, push them straight down. Don't handle it from the clear side where you can see the fluid. You don't want to damage that. Hold it by the white plastic areas anywhere on an edge. Again, very tight area to work in with big hands. Marking the cables is a good idea for reassembly. I've got two machines here and other things on my mind, so trying to go by memory is a chore. You can sell that damper plate before you go further. The head cables, they're delicate and you want to get them square down into their slots. Those have been marked so I don't make an error. And then the first test and high speed. Everything's clean, ready to go. It's a bias test. That Allen key that I'm working with right there, that sets the angle left and right. Sometimes you got to move the head a little bit if your screws aren't loosened enough. I didn't want them terribly tight, I didn't want them terribly loose, so I just get my finger in there and give it a little wiggle and it takes the adjustment. The thumb screw is for moving the head up and down, like to the back and to the front. This is on the Souljet Pro 2. I put a couple heads in there. The bias test. Take notice here that there's no media clamp. It's been pushed down to the very end, to the far left. Because during these tests in the service menu, it's going to ask you to lower the head to the lowest position. And uh, to avoid having an accident, it's safer to have them backed away. I'm pulling, adding a little bit of weight on, on the front of the sheet with my hand there so it doesn't catch. And remember to put them back in the middle position once you're finished. Here I'm wiggling the head a little bit because the last adjustment I did didn't show a difference. So I'm giving it a wiggle and then I'll send it for another test and then I'll see that change that I made with either the thumb screw or the Allen key at that time. There's Four things you need to do to reset the head to get it lined up properly. Two are in service mode and they're manual, which is with the Allen key and the thumb screw. And the other two are um, software based uh, when you're working through the uh, keyboard. 